everybody. I'm Emma, and this is Shaylee, and we are the directors of Anybody for Tea. Now, this is a show that is very near and dear to our hearts because this is the first ever show we did at Concord High School. And we thought, what better way than to leave our time here at the Concord High School Drama Department than to put on the same show, but with our own spin. And seriously, we couldn't have asked for a better cast. We all love them dearly. And um, we, they both brought their own personalities to this, so we th really enjoy the show every time we see it, and I think that you will too. So thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the show. What do you want, O'Finn? Don't you realize it's midnight? I know it is, Captain Williams, but I saw the light on in your office and I thought it would be all right. Of course you did. Well, what is it? I'm a busy woman. It's my request for transfer, Captain. You interrupted me now because of that silly business? Officer Dennis O'Finn, age 40, bachelor, 12 years in uniform on the beat, seven years in homicide division, present rank detective first class, request transfer to arson squad. Oh, Finn, do you even know what arson squad does? It investigates fires, Captain. At least you know that. Reasons for request? Personal. Would you care to, I don't know, elaborate? It's private personal, Captain. Oh, Finn, you've seven years in the homicide department. You're no Sherlock Holmes, but you seem to have some luck of the Irish, so you've done a pretty damn good job, and we don't need anybody in arson. So why should I transfer you? Please, Captain, it's a matter of life and death. Explain. Do I have to? If you want the transfer, yes. Captain, will you keep this? Confidential. Of course. Word of honor. Word of honor. Well then, Captain, it went something like this. There's this house you see, 909 Sycamore, a house about 100 years old. And it was right across the street from the apartment building where I live. And it being nice weather, I thought it fair to leave the shades and the windows up while I was shaving. Now in this house, there were six old spinster ladies. Peeping toms, that's what they were, Captain. Elizabeth! 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 What? What's he doing now? He's in his undershirt. Can you see the strawberry marks on his shoulder? Ah, uh, yeah, uh huh. I want to see for myself. Fine. Oh, look at them muscles. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what he's doing now? What? Calisthenics. What kind? <laughs> With the big dumbbells. He's swinging them up and down and up and back. Oh, I can just picture him. He stopped for a minute now. He's inhaling. <clears throat> oh, you should see his chest. I want to see you with my own eyes. He's squaring his shoulders. Oh, his shoulders, they're so broad. What's he doing now? Now he's flexing his biceps. They're swelling up and up and up. Oh, stop it, I can't stand it anymore. Give me the spyglass. But it's my turn. But it's my window. But it's my house. It's my turn. 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 Never mind now. He's finished with his exercises and he's disappeared. It was a grand sight. If only we could afford a more powerful and bigger little uh, spyglass. I don't even freaking know what that is. <laughs> I wish I could see him. Well, we've sat on this porch and watched him go in and out. But I mean, really see him. 
Oh, close! So would I. Why, we don't even know what color his eyes are. Well, if you don't know, then nobody does. You've had the binoculars most of the time. Uh, uh, I wish I could hear his voice, too. Well, how can we get close to him unless we actually go across the street and... Uh, and what, Betty? Couldn't we pay him a neighborly visit? We can't just go visiting gentlemen. We're nice ladies. So what can we do, then? Well, let's invite him to tea. That would be improper, inviting him to tea, and we haven't even been introduced. We'll have to arrange it somehow. We'll have to get him to come over here and visit us. How? Well, if he was a plumber, we could stop up the sink. If he was an electrician, we could blow a fuse. <laughs> but he's not a plumber, nor an electrician. <coughs> he's a detective in homicide. Possibly arrange for a detective in homicide to come to this house. <laughs> That's simple. All we need is a body. <laughs> a body. A dead body, that is. Well, how are we gonna get a dead body? I wasn't there, okay. Captain, but that's the way I've reconstructed it. You can see now, can't you? It was no fault of mine except for leaving the shade up. You barged into my office at midnight to tell me that these old ladies killed for the sake of your charming I'm not company? meaning to boast, Captain. I wouldn't have believed it myself. But these six old ladies, spinsters, every one of them, getting a little old and touched in the head. I think I might still have your report on this case. Let's hope I do. Oh, no. Um... I can't seem to find it now. Just refresh my memory. What happened? Well, it wasn't long before there was a dead body, sure enough. But by the time Kramer and I got there, well, the scene of the crime looked like, well, nothing I've ever seen before. Isn't she pretty? I must admit, it was very generous of all of you to give her your best things to wear. Oh, she deserves it. Wasn't it nice of her giving us this chance to meet Mr. Offen? Yes, that's why I. Sacrifice my precious pearls. Isn't my heart becoming of her? Do you think they'll bury her in my feather boa? I suppose so. All those pretty things gone to waste. No, I, I, uh, I didn't mean that. Forgive and forget. I'll just fix it with this perfume that she was always trying to steal. Oh, it must be her. Oh, I'm gonna swear. Everybody behave themselves. Now line up at the door for introductions. Oh, and don't step on those dishes I dropped. Remember, nothing must be touched at the scene of a crime. <laughs> we touched the body. We had to. Elizabeth went and got herself killed in her worst old house dress. Oh. Isn't someone going to get the door? I will. I thought Mr. O. Finn was coming. Yeah. Name's Kramer. Well, Finn's parked in the car. And that, Captain, was when I walked right into the trap. Well, what have we here? Mr. O'Finn. That's myself. Now, is this the house where the lady died? It is. Where's the body? Oh, it's the <laughs> Mr. O'Finn, I'm Hildegard Hodge. This is my house. I'm the one who called. How do you do? Oh, boy, you seem a little peaked. Haven't been eating the right things, have you? So away with you bachelors. Bachelor? Well, you aren't married, are you? Well, no. Good, then you're unattached. Now, look, lady. You're not supposed to be asking the questions here. I am. Now, where's the body? First, you must meet my boarders. This is Nettie Norton. Oh, you have such strong grip, Mr. Elfin. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Oh, no, I loved it. I felt just like I was one of your dumbbells. Nettie! What's this? Hello. I'm Amantha Abernathy. Oh boy, you are strong, Mr. Ophin. Squeeze a little harder. Honest lady, I didn't mean to. Well, that's the way with you he-men. You don't know your own strength. What? <laughs> oh, I'm Lucy Long. Mr. Ophin, you remind me of my Herbert. Who? A bow of mine. But he's dead now. I'm 
sorry to hear that. Oh, that's all right. Besides, he wasn't nearly as handsome as you are, Mr. O'Finn. Oh, Mr. O'Finn, you are so handsome. Lucy, you're a bold hussy. Mr. O'Finn, I'm Betty Bertigard. What's the matter? Will somebody get her a glass of water or Would something? You catch me if I swooned. Well, yeah, I guess so. In your strong, muscular arms. Bernie! <laughs> Show him Elizabeth. Mr. Elfin, this is Elizabeth Elsworth. Um, is she dead? We wouldn't have given her all the pretty things if she were alive, would we? She's dead, all right. Kramer called a meat wagon, probably a heart attack or something. Now look, ladies, I'm afraid you made a mistake in calling homicide. You see, every time somebody keels over dead, we're not supposed to come look at the body. It's only if the death has occurred under suspicious circumstances. Natural death just isn't in our line. Let's go, Kramer. This wasn't a natural death. She was poisoned. Murdered. Murdered? Who says she was murdered? We all do. And what makes you think so? <laughs> Elizabeth was as strong and as healthy as a horse. She didn't just keel over. Did the doctor do a, a what's that that they do? Autopsy. Ah, uh, yes, an autopsy, and then you'll see. What makes you so sure? Who did it? We don't know. It's a mystery. Did you all do it together? I didn't. I didn't either. You're supposed to figure it out, Mr. Ophin. You're the detective. <laughs> Kramer? Are they playing a game or what? Well, I don't know, but one thing's for sure, that, that's a real body. We better get the facts then, just in case. Yeah, you're the boss. Hey. <laughs> All right now, ladies, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. We're going to get the third degree! <laughs> we'll start here with the body. You didn't find it here all decked out like this? We had to dress Elizabeth up for the occasion. But, uh, occasion? What occasion? Gentlemen callers. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, couldn't leave her all sprawled out in her worst old house just now, could we? If there's been a murder, nothing should be touched at the scene of the crime. We didn't touch everything. Over there are the dishes that Hildegard dropped when she discovered the body. You discovered the body? Well, I was bringing in the tea things, and that's when I found Elizabeth dead on the floor. And you were so surprised you dropped the dishes? And then she screamed. We heard her upstairs. And we kind of knew what it meant. What is all this? Kramer, pick up these broken pieces, put them in a box, and label them Exhibit A. Yeah. Or like get a box. In the kitchen. That way. Yeah. Well, now, there was a murder. Was there? And someone in this room committed the murder. Who else? Now, the first thing to look for in any murder is motive. Now, who would want to kill this poor old lady here? Well, somebody had to be murdered, and frankly, I'm glad it was Elizabeth. So? What did you have against Elizabeth? Well, she was selfish with the spyglass thingy or whatever. The spyglass? What's this about a spyglass? Shut up, you netty! I'm sorry! Come on now, out with it! What's the business about a spyglass? Hey, oh, Finn. <laughs> Maybe this is what they're talking about. <laughs> well... Here it is, but what do you mean? Well, I... Uh, <laughs> use it to look, bro. <laughs> oh, 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 Finn. Long distance spec like this, uh, they, they're looking at things that... Well, outdoors. <laughs> the only thing I can see from here is my apartment building. I can even see my own windows. Ladies, come with me in the kitchen. It's time for tea. <laughs> Oh, oh, do hurry up. Oh, I'm so excited for tea! <laughs> oh, Finn. Oh, Finn. I see the gimmick, don't you? What are you talking about? We are brilliant detective, oh, Finn, but it's your modesty that's blinding you. Now, here are these poor old dames with nothing to do all day but sit around. And so one of them has a what, kaleidoscope or whatever that is, and they spend the time... <laughs> Looking out the window, minding everybody else's business because, well, you know, they got no business of their own. And what do they see straight across the street? A window. And what's in that window? 
A man. And what fine a specimen of manhood is there than an Irish cop? <laughs> you are a beautiful creature to behold, then, so thin. <laughs> They're all in love with you. Shut up! But how could these poor old biddies lure you across the street? You? A detective in homicide? It's elementary, my dear old Finn. I'll tell you what it is. It's a dirty lie. You are the motive for this murder. You can't prove that. Proof? You want proof? Well, here it comes. Oh, we're having a party, Mr. Ophin. <laughs> Where's my cane? I lost it. Don't worry, Mr. Ophin. We opened a fresh package of tea. I'm sure there's no rat poison in this. I brought my best tea. Thanks for you, Mr. Ophin. Oh, but there's only six cups. Not enough for Mr. Kramer. Yeah, yeah, I can take a hint. Six is company and seven's a crowd. I think I'll uh, grab myself a beer on the way home. Ta-ta, Dennis, darling. Oh, don't drink too much tea. It's terrible strong stuff. <laughs> So Krim was right? They committed a murder just to get you inside their house? It seems like it, Captain. Did you conduct an investigation? I did, Captain. We found arsenic rat poison in the house. The dead woman had drunk it in her tea. She would always sneak down to the kitchen in the afternoon and steal an extra cup of tea. Somebody had mixed the poison in there and it was just waiting for her. Well, uh, who was guilty? Well, that wasn't so easy to figure out. You see, they didn't try to help me much, seeing as they wanted to keep me coming around. So I tried some strategy. I told them I decided there hadn't been a murder after all, and that I wasn't going to be coming back anymore. How did that strategy work? Miserable, Captain. Miserable. Oh, it's been a whole week now. A whole week, and not a glimpse of him going in and out the back way and keeping his blind shut. We ought to complain to the police. We don't want to get Mr. Ophin in trouble. Well, Elizabeth really was murdered, and he ought to be here right now, right this minute, investigating. Well, we're just going to have to do what we... <coughs> Are you, is now your time? No. <laughs> gonna have to do what we talked about. You mean we need another murder? Yes. Oh dear! Who shall it be? Nettie? She's the most convenient. Oh poor Nettie. She's such a kind soul. She's the only one of you I really like. <laughs> well, if you'd rather we use you, dear. Oh no! I would want to miss the fun when Mr. O'Finn comes back. Then he'll have to be nutty then. All right, but after this we have to get some new daughters. I'd rather poison a stranger any day. Do we have any more poison? Mr. O'Finn took the last batch as Exhibit B. I bought a new one. All right then, Hildegard. Go get it. And I have a suggestion. Let's all close. Thank you. Close our eyes, and then one at a time, whoever poisoned Elizabeth <clears throat> can put a spoonful of poison into Nettie's cup. Oh, goody! Then it shall still be a mystery! Let's hurry before Nettie gets here. Oh, who first? You, Birdie. All right, I am going. Now, which one is Nettie's cup? The one with the nick in the rim. She did that herself, and I can't afford to always be buying new tea things. For pity's sake, Bertie, put the poison in the right cup. What a perfect chance for a double cross. How about that? A double cross. That's slaying among criminals. Of course, I wouldn't poison anybody. I couldn't even poison a rat. <laughs> oh, don't play innocent. Are you finished? I am back home now. You're to Lucy. Oh, 
I don't need to go. You all know I couldn't use the poison. I couldn't even hurt a fly. <laughs> I've known all along that you were the one who poisoned Elizabeth. That's not so. <laughs> you stop teasing her, Amantha. Just get this done and over with. Hurry up, Lucy. Listen to her old bones creak. <laughs> That's not my bones. That, that's the floor. Mm -hmm. I'd like to poison you, Amantha. That's who I'd like to poison. What? No, Lucy. We'll save Amantha for another time. I don't think I'll drink any more tea in this place. I don't trust anybody. All this very long and warm. Oh, Lucy, aren't you finished yet? You've taken long enough to poison all of us. I'm back at home base, and I didn't use the poison. Mm-hmm. It's my turn now. Oh, I feel just like Lucretia Borgia. You think she's doing it? <laughs> of course she is. She's bloodthirsty. She's the guilty one. Remember, my dears, the guilty one is the one who brought dear Mr. Open into our midst. That's right. Thank you very much, guilty one, whoever you are. Would you shut up, you fool? Leave me be. I'm back. All right. It's my turn now, and I'll take the rat poison and hide it since I'm the last one. All right, I'm back. Now everyone sit down and do try to act normal. Just in time. I hear Nettie coming down the front steps. Birdie, come sit down. Oh, you're starting without me again. I hope you've left the body some tea. So, they committed another murder to lure you into their house, did they, Ophen? That they did, Captain. And don't think I didn't take it to heart, being the motive for murder like I was. Well, they put in a call for me and Kramer, and wouldn't you know it, there they were in their reception line, waiting for me. Oh, Ben, there you are. You should know by now, it's a regular Tuesday, stop. <laughs> Another one, eh? Yes, Mr. O'Finn, there's a murderer loose in this house and we demand police protection. <laughs> Sounds to me like it's the police that need protection. Do you see what happens when you neglect your duties? Something always seems to get into the tea when you're not here. You needn't remind me, Kramer. Well, this time I'm not going to budge from this place until I find out who's guilty. Oh, wonderful! Mr. Open is going to live here with us! <laughs> oh, do you think it would be proper? We've only ever had lady boarders. I'm the one who decides what's proper in this house. Oh, please, Hildegard. There are two vacant rooms now. He could have his choice. I could see to it. That is, if he eats the right things. But he'd have to pay double because he'd eat twice as much. Oh, Hildegard, you're so mercenary. I'm a poor woman. Poor? You're an old miser. Well, if he has to pay double, he should have both rooms. And one of them could be his gymnasium. And we can see his strawberry marks again. Bertie. Ladies, ladies, stop. Kramer, will you go make sure we have a dead body? Yeah. Oh, she's dead all right. We can guarantee that. Well, thank you. All right now, ladies, listen up. There's been another murder. There'll be no more tea parties because I want to find out who did it. We don't know because we all hit our eyes. Kramer? <laughs> what kind of malarkey are they handing me now? Don't you see, Ophid? They're playing games with you, like, like hide and seek. And you're it, pal. Have you no imagination, man? One of them committed the murder, while the rest of them hid their eyes. Joe, isn't that the usual way mortars are committed? They're too dangerous to run loose. I ought to call the paddy wagon and lock them all up. Well, you, you can't do that. You got to have evidence. What evidence do I have? Mm. Uh, you still got exhibit A, a bunch of broken cups and sauces. See how helpful we are, Mr. O'Finn. We left those all for you. 
Well, it's a good thing you didn't touch these, because if you did, I'd have locked you up for destroying evidence. Is it really evidence? Of course it is! Hopefully? <sighs> That's right. What does that mean? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know, Open. What does it mean? Now don't try to confuse me, Kramer. It's just that, well, she dropped him in surprise when she found the body. So what? Well, that's the funny thing. Here's a whole set of plates, dishes, cup saucers, broken. But, but you weren't short of dishes at all, were you, Miss Hildegard? On the day of the first murder, when I came and drank tea with you ladies, you brought out another set. Yes, I did. That's that set out here on the table now, I suppose? Oh, no. Those are my second best set. But when you're staying with us every day, Mr. Open, I'll always bring out my best set. Because every day will be a special day with you. Hold everything. <laughs> Don't be getting me off track. Now, let's see. Your best set is locked away in a cupboard. Your second best set is out here on the table now. So these in the box must have been your third best. Wait a minute. You want this up to no fin? I may be Kramer, I may be a vet. Let's have a look at these broken pieces. All right. Kramer, do you notice anything, anything funny about this junk? Yeah, how do you mean? <laughs> oh, you'll never be a detective, Kramer. Ah. Look at these stuff. Do you notice anything missing? Yeah, so there are some missing pieces. Some very important missing pieces, my boy. These cups, they don't have any handles. Miss Birdie, I have a question to put to you. Yes, Mr. Alfin. On days that are not special occasions, days when you don't have any visitors, do you usually drink your tea in cups without handles? Oh no, Mr. Alfin, that wouldn't be ladylike. Why was it then on the day of the first murder, Miss Hildegard brought a set of cups without handles? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you all why. Miss Hildegard brought a set of cups without handles because she knew she was going to find a dead body, and she knew she was going to drop them in surprise. Miss Hildegard Hodge, I place you under arrest for the murder. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my goodness. goodness. Was it really you, Hildegard? It was really me. Pop handles. I would have never thought of a clue like that before. <laughs> Mr. Ophin, clever. Oh yes, marvelous, Mr. Ophin. Are you going to take Hildegard to jail? Are you going to take me in your car, Mr. Ropin? Does Mr. Kramer have to come along? Yeah. Oh, Hildegard, you're the lucky one. If only I had the nerve. I'd give anything to ride in the car with Mr. Ophin. Oh, Mr. Ophin, oh, I'm so afraid. No. 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 Stop. Stop. Well, that's how it happened, Captain. But you got your murder. Mm. Why should you have to resign from homicide? I don't mean to brag, Captain, but it was a neat bit of deduction if I do say so. But the thing that is now that I've solved the murders, I'm not going to be going back anymore. And you remember what happened last time I started ignoring them? And they were jealous of Hildegard, don't you see? One of them will be committing murder too, just to get attention. As I said, Captain, it's a matter of life and death. Yes, I see. To be on the safe side, I told them you already approved the transfer. I said, ladies, if there's any more murders, you'll have the full attention of Mr. Kramer. Today's my last day in homicide. As of tomorrow, I'm transferring over to the arson squad. Hey, uh, oh, Finn, you not see it? I don't know. How about it, Captain? Am I an arson? You're an arson open. Transfer is approved. Good, because I, I just wanted to make sure, because, uh, well, I heard it over the shortwave. There's a big, big old house with a large fire. It's, um, well, actually, it's right across the street from your old apartment, old Finn. 